Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to all the Cloud Scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross and I'm your host once again. Uh, for any of you who are new to my page, this is the Cloud Scholars page uh, where we talk about Azure services. We talk about all the Azure infrastructure. I teach cybersecurity. I uh, also have a podcast on here as well. So please like and subscribe so you can get some more uh, great content and I can help you out with your Azure journey. Uh, at the end of the day, I want to build a community to help each other out so that we all can grow and land a position that we all desire. So in this video, what I'm going to talk to you about is the Azure Policy Initiative. So what I like to do with a lot of the learning is I like to create scenarios and I, I work as a cloud architect. I'm a consultant. And um, a lot of times what I like to do is I like to do scenarios because this is a way you kind of learn, right? You, you're learning all these different things within the Azure um environment the world right i would say and you know it's kind of hard to you know pinpoint and figure certain stuff out um when you don't have a scenario about how you can use all these different resources because there's so many ways that you can do things within the azure environment and a lot of times this experience really helps out so for what we're going to do today is this is the scenario that we have so we have a client that needs logs from azure resources to go to two different teams for our use case scenario we will utilize azure key vaults the two teams that need the logs are our operations team and a security team. Now, this is something that I actually faced uh, with one of my clients. So that I thought it was a really good way to show you how to use um, Azure policy initiatives. So what we're going to create in our lab is what we're going to have is we need to have an Azure key vault. So you need to have an Azure key vault created in your lab if you're going to follow along. And then you also need to have a, a event hub as well. And then also a log analytics workspace. So I kind of should have started off the video this way, but that's fine. So what is an Azure policy initiative? So initiatives uh, enable you to group several related policy definitions to simplify assignments and management because you work with a group as a single item. For example, you can group related tag and policy definitions into a single initiative. Rather than assigning each policy individually, you can apply an initiative. So it's really good when you're doing your Azure policy initiatives is that you really think about what you're gonna do for your, that initiative and you want to group certain policies that are similar. So what we have here on the right hand side is a diagram and it has a policy initiative. Now you would call it whatever you want. For this case, we're just calling it policy initiative just to stay on the same page. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're going to send logs to an event hub because security needs to uh, send that off to their SIM tool. And then we're going to also send logs to an analytics workspace. Now that third box there is just for, you know, I just wanted to explain to you how the policy initiatives work. You can add more than just two policies to it. For ours, we're going to do two policies, just the first two boxes. But the third box is just a key vault should use private link. So this is just, you know, more um, Azure policies that you want to combine in your policy initiatives. But if you're going to really do it the right way, you're going to do policies that are very similar and you're going to have some type of work stream so that this way it's easier to manage your Azure policies instead of do it one by one. Okay, so back over at the Azure portal, what we're going to do is make sure that we have all that we need. So let's go to Azure Key Vaults, and we have our Key Vault there, so that is good. So over at Event Hubs, we do not have an Event Hub, so I'm going to create one really quickly. Scholars event of 2 2, price and tier. We'll just leave it as basic, which is fine. And we'll just review and create. Okay, so while the deployment is in progress, what I'm going to do is I just want to make sure we have a log analytics workspace. So I come over here and we have a log analytics workspace. So that event hub is still being created, but by the time we do our policy initiative, that event hub shall be should be completed. So I come up here, I can see deployment is still in progress, which is perfectly fine. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna go over to the Azure policy. So over our Azure policy, if you go up to definitions, this top area is where you, you you can say, okay, policy definitions, or you could do initi initiative definition. So we're gonna click on the initiative definition, and this is gonna be our policy initiative. So what we wanna do is you can say the, the location of your policy initiative. I only have one subscription here, 
So it's going to be just like that. But what I'll do here is I'll just say key vault initiative. And I can put a description here, send logs to log analytic workspace and event hub. All right, great. Now category, I can change the category. I could use an existing category if I wanted to. Um, but for this, I'll just say create new category and I'll leave that blank. It's not really a big deal. When I get over here to policies, this is where, you know, you're going to add all the different policies that you want. So in our case, I want to add two policies that's really going to help us out in terms of making sure that we're able to send both of those logs to the right location. So if I come here to add policy definitions, the policy that I need to look for is deploy diagnostic settings for key vault settings for key to uh, analytic workspace and then we also have deploy diagnostic settings for key vault to event hub so we're going to check off both of these and we're going to add both which is great so we have that all sorted out over here we have groups. Now in groups, it says groups help you organize policies with an initiative. So you can create a group and then this way you can have your policies within a group. I mean, honestly, policy initiatives is supposed to group things. So you're gonna have a group within a group. Um, I really haven't really used groups. I read up on it. I don't really you know, uh, see much use for it. I guess it's really depending on your organization, uh, but you can leave that empty. And then you have your initiative parameters, allow parameter values to be reused across individual policy parameters. You don't really need that for what we're doing here. Over here is where you're really going to have to go through. So you can see here, you can say only show parameters that need input. If you check that off, it's going to show all this other stuff here. So uh, deploy settings for key vaults. And you want to say deploy if not, not exist, deploy if not exist. So that's what you want. But we can keep this off here and what it says set value you need to tell it which log analytics workspace it needs to go to so if i click down here i have one that i can choose from which is great and then for the event hub i need to say where it's supposed to go so if i click down here it's going to say no value i have to click over here in that little space you'll see it has my subscription and then namespaces is starting to load up and then there it is that's the new event hub that we created and then the authorization rule is this root manage shared access key and then you click select and then we click on next it's going to do a review and create and we're going to click on create so over here if we go to our definitions so over here when we go to our definition we have our key vault initiative this is what we just created and what we need to do is we click on that key vault initiative and then now we need to assign the initiative so you assign the initiative, you can assign the initiative and you can have exclusions or you can come up here to your scope and you can drop it to a specific, the whole subscription or a resource group. So I'm going to do it to the resource group because that's where our, our key vault is. So, and then you can have exclusions too, if you want to do that. And you can put a description in here as well, if you want to, and I will just call key vault initiative test out. I'll just say testing. Then when I click on next, um, I like to do this override, which this is in preview, um, but you, you don't have to do it. I like to do deploy if not exists, kind of an override. So if it has in the other default um, options, so let's say we have some options where it says audit or modify or whatever, you can now do this override where you're forcing it to do that. I like to do the override on my end. If I go to parameters, there's no parameters there. Remediation. So this is extremely important that you do this. So I have another video that I talk about Azure policies, but Azure policies, they, they changed since that last time I've done, I did the video. So that's why I wanted to create this updated one. So this one here, it says by default, this assignment will only take effect on newly created resources. Existing resource can be updated via a remediation task after this policy is assigned. So if you have a resource that's already created, so for our, our instance, we have an Azure key vault that has already been created. So if I were to create this Azure policy and I would assign it, it's only going to do uh, apply the policy to newly created resources. This create remediation task is going to say, hey, you need to make sure that everything that was already created before this policy was 
established also is looked at as well and then this policy to remediate so this right here you can hit the drop down and you can choose which one it's going to do it to um it to me i've had some issues with doing it this way before where one policy did work and the other one i had to come back and then do a policy remediate for that one so right here you'll see where it says monitoring uh monitoring contributor log analytics contributor and this is for log analytics so let's see if i change this is that bottom area change? Nope, it still says the same thing, so that's fine. So we'll leave it, and I'm just going to leave it on the key vault, uh, the uh, event hub, because that one tends to, you know, act a little quirky the last time I did it. And what I'll do is click on next, and here's a nice thing that you can have for like a non-compliant message to help people understand that hey, you're not in compliance. You can put something in here if you want to. For our case, we're not going to, and then you can see right here you have um, your different definitions down here. If I click on this area, I can view the policy definition or I can edit message or whatever I want to do. So I'm going to go over here and click next. And I'm going to click on create. So while that's being created, what I want to do is I want to come up here and I want to go back to my key vault. So if I come to the key vault, this policy was just created. I'm going to go over to my diagnostic settings. And in the diagnostic settings, you're seeing nothing showing up here. Now, remember, our two policies are going to do two things, right? Our initiative, our policy initiative is going to do two things. One is going to send it to Log Analytics Workspace. And the second thing is going to do is going to send it to Event Hub. So what we should see here is two different names show up. It'll probably say set by policy or something like that. And you should see it should have the event hub where the data is going to go to. And then over here, it should have another line at the bottom to show where the log analytics workspace is going to go to as well. So policies do take a little time to run. You can you know, run a PowerShell query to kind of force it to kind of uh, do a replication really quickly. But we'll give it some time. And what I'll do is I'm going to cut this video and I'll come back once the policies uh, show up correctly. All right, so we're back. So if I come over here um, to the key vault, if I go to diagnostic settings, you see here it's a set by policy and it says the event hub. But remember, we had two policies that we created here. So what I wanna do is for the policy initiative, when you're in here, you could go to compliance and you can see exactly what's compliant and what is. So it says uh, for the key vault initiative, this is the one that we have. I'm gonna click on that and in here, you'll see that it says I'm compliant because that's the key vault event hub. And remember, when I did the remediation task, I went to that one, but this one didn't show up either. So this is one of the things that I find a little quirky with the policy initiatives. If you have multiple policies and you have a remediation task, it's not going to do a remediation task for everything. It kind of just does it for one at a time. And I'm still doing some more research and figuring out exactly how I can get that to kind of go. But you have this option here, which is create remediation task. And you see here, it says view definition, it says policy to remediate, and it gives us the option. And you, see you still have the drop down, so I'm going to do this one. Um, and it says failure threshold. We can leave everything the way it is, and it has a scope. And what I'll do is I'll just click on remediate. So what I'm going to do is that remediation task, the other one was originally earlier in this video was for Event Hub. We're going to have this one for this uh, Log Analytics workspace. So I'm going to give this a little bit of time and I'll see if what should happen is that when we come here to our key vaults after this remediation task is set up, we should have another line here and it probably would say set by policy and might say log analytics workspace and we'll see two that shows up here. Um, so I'll let that run and then I'll come back to uh, continue the video. Okay, so we're back. After I did the remediation task, it didn't take long. I just waited about 15 minutes, but this is exactly what I was referring to. You see it says set by policy and we have the event hub and we have set by policy and it's going to a log analytics workspace and this is our Sentinel workspace that we have here. If I were to come back to Azure policies and I would have looked to see, okay, let's see where we at with our compliance. You see right here with our overview, we can see the same thing. It's key in vault initiative testing and you can see that it is now compliant. Um, before I was showing, one of them was showing um, good and the other one wasn't. This for some reason is still showing up as non-compliant. It may be taking a little while for the system to, to take effect. Let me come over here to compliance. 
yeah it's still showing um incorrectly so that might take a little while for it to uh, upload but we are able to see our key vault and we are able to see both diagnostic settings are showing up and that's exactly what we wanted in the beginning of this uh, video that was our goal is to make sure that the uh logs for our key vaults will go not only to a log guys workspace for our operations team but also our security needs to see that um information as well so as always i want to thank you for watching this video I uh, hope the information I provided you was beneficial. If you have any questions, uh, please leave it in the comment section. I'm more than happy to hear what you all have to say. If there's another Azure topic that you're trying to learn or something that you want to get better understanding, or even if you have questions about something that's going on at your work, I've had people reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I'm running into this issue. And there are times I do know what the issue is and I'm able to help them out. And there, there are times I don't, but if I don't know it, I'm going to help you and look into it because I just want to help out. Um, and build, as I say, as always in a lot of my videos, is build that community so we can help each other out. So thank you again for taking the time out of your busy day to spend it with me and watch one of my videos. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. My name is Kieran Tross once again, and my goal here at Cloud Scholars is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you, and see you next time.